Hey, good morning, family and friends. How are you doing today? I know you are doing great, and uh, I welcome you to this great day, and also to this live broadcast, encouraging you to join me as we seek and spread knowledge. I just get back now. My car broke down uh, along the way, and I left it there. Come back home with a Uber, and we we'll deal with that tomorrow. So, and I want to share with us this very important thing about God. What do you think about God? What is God? Because, you know, they have already given us a definition of God, but uh, where I come from, God is Chineke, that is creator, all right? So, but, uh, you know, the, the, the way they give us this God, religion give us the God that God is... Um, is a higher being now they see it as some or somebody or something that must be worshipped i don't see god like that i see god as a creator anyone can, that can create anything is god if you can create anything you are god you create it you made it happen that's what makes you a god or that, that's what makes somebody or something god if you can create something if you can form something of like the inventors, the manufacturers, they are girls, they are doing something, the, the laborers, if you can do anything, if you can help anyone, you are God. I love uh, when they say that God is my helper. So, but when they say they are thinking about a, a being in the sky, God is your helper. Anyone that help you in your time of need is God. My 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 ancestors or my tribe we we used to say or uh, they always said Mado uh, your fellow a, a man is a god to his fellow man. That's how it's supposed to be. See others as God and yourself as God. So God is not supposed to be worshipped. God's supposed to be related with you, supposed to have a relationship with God, with one another. We are gods. But I thought to this, uh, God is a law breaker. Ooh. Man, <laughs> people that believe in God will not, will not find it funny at all. But to me, it's funny, you know. You know, God is a conceived as the perfect. You know, people, con con uh, people conceive God as a, a being, you know, that is perfect. Omnipotent, omniscient, originator and ruler of the universe, the principal object of faith and worship in monotheistic uh, religions. So, people is just a being conceived. The, orig the origin of God is man's mind, in the mind of man. That's where God originated. God has his own origin or his own origin which is in the mind of man, because man have the ability to make up things. That's how man created God. No God created any man. It is God and Goddess that created a man. That's how we came to be naturally. Nature brought us up for male and female, which can be proven today. A man and a woman will come together, God and Goddess, male and female, and produce another male and female. That's how it is. That's what we can prove. We can prove. Some people are still confused. They said, "Okay, how did uh, how did the war started? Nature. How did we come to be? Nature. You ask me, how do you come to be? My parents. How did my parents come to be? Their parents. The same thing goes to you. Truth is constant, just like the sun. It's okay. Who created the sun? Who told you the sun was created? They, they, that, that, that creationism um, theory or myth, that's where the problem really lies. God created you. Okay, I want to see the God that created me. You say, I cannot see him. But you say, some people are hearing his voice, but they cannot see him. How can you hear the voice of God, but you cannot see the form of God? You say, God has no form. Yes, yeah, somebody saw his back. Yes, yeah, somebody is sitting at his right hand. Yet you say, the earth is full too. You say he has no form. You say somebody saw him, you know, with with uh, robes. His robe filled the temple. So I want to show us how God break the law. You know, the law they stole from the African law of Maat. 
and they, they stole from the, those 42 words and they penned them to be Ten Commandments, which is called the Ten Commandments. They said that Moses received from God on Mount, on, on Mount Sinai. Remember where Moses received that, that Ten Commandments that you believe in? It's still in the Africa. Africa, the Ten Commandments came from Africa. They copy it from our ancestor. Man Sinai is not in Israel. Man Sinai is not in Europe. Man Sinai is not in Rome. Man Sinai is not in Asia. It's in Africa. To date, as we speak, they may move it tomorrow, but they can't move it anymore. They cannot change it. It's all, well, everybody know that the Ten Commandments, they said, came from what? Man Sinai. So that's where God is, in Africa, not anywhere else. Okay, so the uh, uh, Christians, Muslims, and the Jews are supposed to know that their origin is Africa, Mount Sinai. Okay, <laughs> but that's the story they put in the Bible. So I want to show you from the Bible, and I want you to read with me. You see that what this thing they say God gave people, or gave the people of Israel this commandment, which some Africans are claiming now they are, Israelites because they are out of their culture. They have been brainwashed to believe their own culture, their own ancestors were evil. So anything Israel is good. That Israel never existed. It is just a, a fictional name or a fictional state they created in a book, just like in a movie, as you have Wakanda, or as you have um, um, Spider-Man, all those names. There are some, some places or some figures or uh, in the in the movies or in the books that they doesn't exhibit the writers or the producers just made up that to convey whatever message they want to convey okay so in Exodus chapter 20 which we know to be the place the ten commandments is written in the bible okay hear what it said remember they said uh, hear what verse 1 say and the god spoke all these words so uh, Everything that's supposed to be saying after was supposed to be what God said, not what somebody said that God said. Not somebody saying that this is the law of God. Because God is the one speaking. If God will say, this is my law, I am telling you, do, do, uh, telling you to do this, observe my this. So I wish I will walk us through for you all to understand. Always remember the beginning. The beginning of this chapter 20 is what? And God spoke all these words. He did not say, and God spoke all these words through Moses. He did not say that. He said, and God spoke all these words. In other words, Moses was not trying to interpret it. Moses was not trying to present it to the people. This is what God said. No, he said, if they say Moses is the writer of this. So Moses was writing down what God said. He said, and God spoke all these words. It's not my word. It's not the word of anyone who is direct from God. If the word is coming direct from you, you will, uh, you will speak as if it's coming from you, not as if you are speaking through somebody. He did not say this is the word of God through Moses. He did not say this is the law of God through Moses. He did not say this is God speaking through Moses. He said, and God spoke all these words saying directly. Here, one of verse 2. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. That is the, the first commandment. He said he brought them out of the house of bondage. But he put them back in the bondage. Because law is bondage. Law brings bondage. Everyone that has a law, that's why they created the law. I was telling somebody, I said, we don't need any law to live in this life if we are living as human. But the problem is people made up issues about God, brought religion, because religion is the genesis, the beginning of every problem we're having today in the world. We're not supposed to be paying to live in this world. We're not supposed to be fighting. We're not supposed to be, you know, having all this uh, curse in the world. Until religion uh, is religion that brought that nonsense, that mess. That's why you see all the people that are committing all the evil in this world is religious people. You say no, atheists are doing it. Atheists were once religious. They were also indoctrinated, brainwashed before they find out no, it's not true. 
So somebody said, oh, there are people that don't believe in God and that are doing battle. I said, show me one person that believes in humanity that is doing anything evil. Show me. No, no. Unless they set him up. No person that believes in humanity will do evil to any other human being. Deity is a human being gone wrong. And what makes people begin to think about deity, begin to think about God to be worshipped, God to be feared, is religion. He said, I am the Lord. You are God who brought you. Remember what he says, he said, I am the Lord. That's he's speaking directly now. This is the and God spoke this word, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of house, house of bondage. Then the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. So if God said this, why did God then make man in his own image to be gods? In Psalm chapter 82, he said, Ye are gods. Jesus also quoted it in John chapter 10. He said, if he called them gods, if God said, you shall have no other gods before me, why did he make other gods? He break the law he gave to the people of Israel. He called them gods. These are the people he brought them out of Egypt, right? So he hasn't taken them into the promised land, according to the story in the Bible. He said to them, you shall have no other gods before me. But he called, he called them gods in, in, in Psalm 80, uh, 82 and also in John chapter 10. So God broke the law he's, he gave to the people of Israel. The, God is, the, is both a lawgiver and a lawbreaker. Those who break the law should suffer, but you know, God does not suffer. It's people that break the law that suffer, but God never suffers. So, in fact, from the beginning, according to the Bible, God has been breaking his law and God has been lying. Yet nothing happened to him. He lied to, the, to Adam and Eve in the garden. Nothing happened to God. And if God created you in his own image, why are you suffering for breaking the law? When God breaks the law, he never suffered. There's no place it's written that God suffered. God said, you shall have no other gods before me. But he called the people of Israel gods. He made them gods. He said, if he called them gods unto whom the word, or the word of God came. He said, the scripture cannot be broken. God break the scriptures. God said, you shall have no other gods before me. Yet he called the people of Israel gods. The second law. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, God am, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. See, God is still speaking. Right? Good morning. God is still speaking. He said, you shall, have, you shall make, you shall not make, Oh, I used to defend this nonsense. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Who, may, who commanded the people of Israel to make the Ark of the Covenant? Who commanded the people of Israel to make the images of the cherubim and seraphim? God commanded them to make image. When the serpent was, was biting the people of Israel in the wilderness, who commanded Moses to make the brazen serpent? That's where the Roman Catholic always used to defend their idolatry. When you tell them, the, oh, the, the commandment of God says you shall not make yourself a carved image. They say, Moses made one. He said, look at the temple. They made images of the angels. You see? So God made the law. God also broke the law. God is a lawbreaker according to the Bible. This is, I am proving it to you, not me, not my word. It is the word of God. God tell them, don't make any graven image for yourself. Okay, when the serpent was biting them in the wilderness, God asked Moses to make a snake image for them. Also, when they went to build Tabaraco and the temple, 
God asked them to make the, 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 ark, the, the, the ark of the covenant. He said, you shall not make anything that resembles anything in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. So you make cherubim. Where is cherubim? The angels, right? In heaven. The image was there. The serpent on earth. Mm -hmm. The brazen serpent. So God is a lawbreaker. He, they say he's the lawgiver. He's also the lawbreaker. Okay, some people will say, God is not under the law. You are lying. That means God can break the scripture. Is that what you're saying? The law is supposed to be the scripture, right? Okay, if God is not under the law, so why are you under the law? If he created his own image and likeness. If you are like God, God himself said that in, in Genesis chapter 3, he said, man has become like us. Man has become like us. If God is not under the law, then you are not under the law. If God don't need any law to operate, you don't need any law to operate. Think, that's your book, your Bible, your word of God say that, and you see how contra contradictory it is, how stupidity is sound. He said, don't make any graven image for you, carved image for you, but he asked them to carve many things, carve lions, carve many things in the temple. So you break that law, right? But you will visit uh, the generation of people that uh, <laughs> that make or bow to any image. You will visit them with wrath. Because they put this thing to make you fear. Okay, the, the third one. The third one. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. What is the name of God here? Nothing. <laughs> There's no name of God here. So what is the name of God? So they were preparing them. Hmm? Remember, the number one and number two, God say he's the one that is saying it. But look at this uh, third one. He say, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God. He did not say, you shall not take my name in vain. For I am the Lord your God. He said, you shall not take. In other words, they just contradicted it. Verse 1 said that these are the word of God. God spoke these words. But now it's not God speaking. He said, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes him, him his name in vain. It's somebody now speaking, saying this is what God wants. This is what God commanded. So it contradicts verse 1. Read it. Verse 1 said, And God spoke these words, saying. So if God is one that's speaking, that's still speaking in verse 7, He's supposed to say, You shall not take my name in vain. But He did not say that. He said, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Somebody saying that. It's no longer God. He said, for the Lord, not I will, who I will not hold him guiltless, who takes his, uh, my name in vain. So now he shifted from God saying to somebody saying that God said this. Because people made up this. You know, you, you know how people, they show you something. You think that is the whole thing. No. They tell you this is the original, this is real, you know, the scammers. Or the, those um, uh, people with a, a sweet tongue. They tell you, oh no, everything, but no. In in, in it is not is something else. So God is still not the one speaking, because if God is still the one speaking, but someone we said, You shall not take my name in vain, for I will not hold him guiltless who takes my name in vain. Unless you still believe in the Bible, you will not get what I'm saying. But if you can use your brain, think. In verse 1, he said, and God said these things. God spoke these words. He said, God spoke them. But verse 7 is telling you something else. Somebody is saying what you shall not do. He said, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain for the Lord. He did not say, for I the Lord. If you see hear what God is where God is speaking, he said, I the Lord. But he said, You shall not take for the Lord, not I the Lord, will not hold him guiltless. That's number the third law, right? The fourth law. <laughs> Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right? 
Hear what he said. Six days you shall walk, you shall labor, and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. He did not say the seventh day is my Sabbath. If God is the one that is speaking, why is he speaking as if he's speaking for another God? If he's still the God speaking, no, it's not the God speaking. To show you that people made up this Bible is just a work of fiction. Very, very creative that people made it up. But they stole it from, from, from our ancestors or from the Asian people. Where they say, I have not, they say, you shall not. That's how they change it. They twist it to put it in the Bible. Our, our ancestors said, I have not killed a man. He said, you shall not kill a man. They change it. But I'm still showing you how God is breaking his own law. Right? Uh, I didn't say something about taking his name in vain. So there was no name, right? No name mentioned there. But like when you read the book of Isaiah, I say, I am the Lord. That is my name. Which is where Christian, I think, get Jehovah, right? Uh, I think also the Jews call it Yahweh. So Yahweh is Jehovah. He say you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain, right? But God did not give his name here. No name here, unless the Lord is his name. So if the Lord is his name, why calling him Jehovah? Why calling him Yahweh? He does not supposed to have any particular language. But God have particular language and, and in some place they say this is his name. All right, so it um, said uh, uh, verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day, on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall know you shall do no work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant slaves right and they say deliver them from the house of bondage and put them in the land of bondage again you are nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates for in in six days remember he said in six days the the lord made the heavens and he did not say in six days i made the heaven and the earth he did not say that to show you that it's not God it actually speaking. It's somebody that is writing this bit in verse 1. He tell you, all oh, this was God spoke this was saying. Say, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. It's people that tell you God made heaven and earth. There's no God that made heaven and earth. Have you seen that God? No. It does not exist. The sea and all that is in uh, that is in them. And rested the seventh day. Imagine God resting in seven days because he tired after work. Therefore, the Lord bless. He did not say, therefore, I bless. He did not say, I bless. It is, the, therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and the hallow, uh, hallowed it. That's the Jewish people that wrote this nonsense in the Bible telling you, God said that. God didn't say this shit. I just read. It's somebody that said that. I said, for in seven days, the Lord made the heaven and earth. He did not say, I made heaven and earth. Just like Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. He did not say in the beginning I, God, created heaven and earth. It's man that is making up this. And God said that you should keep the Sabbath and keep it holy on the seventh day. But why did he choose the Levites to work on the seventh day? The Levites do the work. If you read the book of Hebrew, he said the same thing. He said the, people, the, the Hebrew, the, the, the Levites also work in the temple. If seventh day is holy, and the, you must not do anything. Why are they sacrificing on, 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 on the Sabbath day? Why are the Levites working? Why? God gave the law. God broke the law. Suppose, you see that? Sabbath is nonsense. It's people that made it. The Jewish people, the people that created Judaism, they are the ones that made up all this nonsense. And tell you, Sabbath day is, is holy. God hallowed. He said, I, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. He did not say, I, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. It is people that put them in the Bible. 
or whatever book they put it to make you believe it is God. Fear that God. If you don't keep his commandments, he will visit you and your generation with evil. That's why I say God is evil because evil became evil. Verse 12. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. That's the commandment of God. Honor the, your father and mother. Then he sent his son. His son said, If you don't hate your father and your mother, you are not worthy to be his disciple. You believe Jesus is God, right? You believe that? So, if God say, honor your father and mother, why would God punish you if you obey your father and mother who asks you to do something on the Sabbath day? Tell me. God say, honor your father and mother. But remember, it's not God that said this nonsense. It's just people that are still saying that. Because he said, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God. He did not say which I, the Lord your God, is giving you. He said which the Lord your God is giving you. Whoever wrote that and put it there, but he tell you in verse 1 that God is the one that spoke these words. No. It's second hand. It's not original. Honor your father and mother. If you honor your father and mother, if they say, do not worship God, will God be angry with them? Honor your father and mother. If your father and mother say you should not go to temple, when God said when you are 20, you must appear before him at least once in a year, and your parents say, no, don't go, will you honor your father and mother against what God said? Did he say, honor your father and mother? He did not say, honor God, that you may your days may be long upon the land. He said, honor your mother and father. In Malachi, here where he said God was begging for honor, he said that um, um, servants obey their master, right? Yeah, he said, where is my honor? <laughs> where is my honor? Servants honor their master. Children honor their parents, something like that. Their children, so honor his father. He said, where is my honor? God begging for honor. Why can you make, how can you make people that cannot honor you? You are the one, you are the maker, you are the creator. You're supposed to make them, you know, you're supposed to be uh, imbued in them to honor you. But it's all made up that people made these things up to deceive us. So, verse, for, verse 13, he said, you shall not murder. <laughs> You know, God break that law in many places in the Bible. He murdered people. He murdered the sons of Judah. Just because, number one, he said the other one, the first one was evil. He killed him. The second one refused to impregnate his uh, late bro brother's wife. God killed him. God killed the whole world for reason best known to him. He said they are becoming evil. Their wickedness is too much. But he's the one that created them. He couldn't f fix them. He killed all of them. He drowned them. Murder. God commanded the kings of Israel to go and kill people. Murder. So when you say thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. But God is God is a killer. God kills. In when Hannah was uh, singing after the story they put, he said, God, God kill it, and God keep it alive. So God is a murderer. He kill it. But he said, thou shalt not kill. Why those people that said, thou shalt not kill, that one killing? God said, thou shalt not kill. Yet, God killed. And he said, he will kill people that don't believe in his son. In future, he will kill them in hell, right? <laughs> okay. Now, this is another commandment of God. He said, you shall not commit adultery. God committed adultery. He slept with a man's wife, Mary, in the Bible. A lady, a young virgin, betrothed to Joseph. God get, went and got her pregnant. Yet God said, thou shalt not commit adultery. <laughs> he's the one that said that you shall not commit adultery. They say he said that. But he committed as adultery by getting Mary pregnant. Or oh, you don't believe that. Who made Mary to, to have Jesus? God, not Joseph. So God committed adultery. You shall not steal. You know, God is a thief. He stole. He stole the land of uh, people and gave it to the people of Israel. 
He said, I'm giving you a land. I'm bringing you into a land. You did not, you, you, the, the houses full of good things you did not build or fill you. The, the well, uh, the land that have well you did not dig. The vineyard you did not plant. What other people labored for? God stole it from them and gave it to the people of Israel. That is stealing. The people did not give it to the people of Israel willingly. God asked them to go and steal. Steal their land, steal their possessions, kill them. That's God. When so he said, You shall not steal, but he stole. He stole the land of a people and gave it to the people of Israel, according to the Bible. That's why I say God is a lawgiver and a lawbreaker according to the Bible. Not according to me, not me that's saying that. I read the Bible and find out God, the God that said you shall not kill and you shall not steal. He killed people and steal their land, steal their, their, their properties and give it to the people of Israel. And you, you see it as a good thing. You say it's the will of God. If it's the will of God, why are you against criminals? If it's the will of God, why are you against assassins or murderers today? You say, oh, only God have the power to do that. It's not true. If only God have the power to do that, why did he create you in his own image? Whatever God, whatever power you think God have, you have. And in reality, you can see you are the only one that can do anything. God cannot do anything. You believe that God created heaven and earth, yet he cannot provide your, 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 your meal. He cannot, he cannot give you money to do anything. He cannot help you to do anything. But you are scrubbing your, 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 your effort to him. Yeah, what he said, you shall not be a false witness against your neighbor. But if you read your Bible now, you see, false witness. For God be a false witness. He tell Adam and Eve, the day you eat this fruit, you will die. They ate it, they did not die. That's false witness. That's a lie. Okay. God lies. God is the father of all lies. Not that serpent they tell you, not that devil they tell you, unless God is that devil. Okay, you're right. But the first place we hear about lying, lying to somebody, telling him this will happen, but it, it didn't happen. God is the one that said that lie. He said, the day you eat it, you will die. They ate it, they did not die. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you know, and you already broke that by giving the people of Israel another people's house. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 6, that's where it is recorded. Say, we give them houses they did not build. Another people built, they went and inherited it. That's coveting your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. He coveted Mary, the wife of Joseph, nor his male servant, nor his female servants, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's, which he did with the nation of Israel. The same people, they say he gave these ten commandments. These ten commandments has nothing to do with Africans. I want to close with this. Africans, you have no place in the Ten Commandments. Africans are not the people of Israel. Africans existed before the people of Israel. The people of Israel imitate, imi, I mean, stole and imitate whatever Africans had. That's why when you read the story in the Bible, you're supposed to find it. When the people of Israel went to Egypt, according to the Bible, when Jacob and his children went to Egypt, did they went there with any religion? No. But when they came out of Egypt, they came out with religion. They came out with worship. <laughs> they came out with the Ten Commandments. All in the land of Egypt. They copied from our ancestors. And it's in the Bible. I don't know why you keep killing yourself about the Bible when it has nothing to do with you as a black person or as African. In closing, Psalm 147, to show you that you are not supposed to be quoting uh, the Bible as it has anything to do with you, unless when it comes to slavery, because they use it to control the slaves. Mm -hmm. Verse, verse 19 and the 20. Now this is Psalm, chapter 147, 19 and 20. He said, He, speaking of God, God declared, declares His word to Jacob, 
not to your ancestors, not to Africans, not to Europeans, <laughs> not to Asians. He said, God declares his word to Jacob, his status and his judgments to Israel, not to Africans. Africans are not Israelites. Africa is not Israel. So you, my brothers and sisters that are Africans like me, if you know you are black or you are African, this is not God's word to you. You are not Jacob, you are not Israel. Whether you say it's by faith, that's nonsense, you are not. He did not give them the law by faith. He gave them the law as covenant according to the Bible. It has nothing to do with you. Hear what he said in verse 20. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. The commandment of God, the Ten Commandments, all the laws that God gave to the people of Israel has nothing to do with you Africans. No matter where you are, whether you said, oh, you have um, Jewish blood in you, or you are Israelite, what, or Hebrew, that's crap, so long you are not uh, from there. You are not. Africans, we are not Israelites. Africans are not Israelites. Africans, we are not Hebrews. Africans are not Hebrews. Africans, we are not Jews. Africans are not Jews. What we were yesterday, we are today, and we will be forever. We never changes. We are the gods. We have the will and the power to make things happen without depending on a law that, a, that was given to a people and their slaves. Remember, the Ten Commandments were the, for the people of Israel and their slaves that came to them as strangers living in their land. You are living there as a slave also. <laughs> Whether they, to the, they capture you in the war or maybe you voluntarily go to live in the land of Israel, you have to live according to this law. This law is not outside the boundaries of Israel. It's not for anyone living outside Israel. Even an Israelite that traveled from the land of Israel to any other nation around them, it's not under this law. So why are you putting yourself under this law? Yet it's not working for you. You have been keeping the law, all the promises that God gave to people that keep the law. Why is it not working in your life? When you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, I think 1 to 14, you see that. He said this will happen to you if you keep his commandments, and you have been keeping it. You see Africans observing the Sabbath and all that. All they get is God is coming. God will come and deal with the wicked. God will come and save us. No God is coming to save you. God is not the one that wrote those Ten Commandments. I have shown that to you. Verse 1 tells you these are the words of God. Then when you start from verse 7, He begins to tell you, You shall not uh, do this for the Lord your God say this. He doesn't say for I say that. So please wake up my people and know that you are alive. Is more important than any law, than any commandments. The purpose of the law and commandment is for control, to control people. Are we animals? No. We are supposed to be people, living as a people, people with brain, people that can think up good things. Somebody, somebody tell, uh, asked me, okay, without knowledge of God, are you telling me there will be no good and evil? I say yes. There will be no good and evil. I tell you, believe in the Bible. I say, your Bible says that. The first time we hear about good and evil is from your God. It's religion that brought this issue of good and evil. He said, no, there must be good. I say, no. Why not have good and the best or good and the better? I, I use, ex I, I use a, a Pentecostal as an example, like in Nigeria, when I used to be a part of Pentecostal uh, uh, fellowship or Pentecostals. You know, when you want to do wedding, we say, no, marriage is not for better for worse. So when it comes to marriage vow, we, instead of putting for better for worse, the Pentecostals use what? For better for best. Think about it. It is God that brought this issue of what? Good and evil. And whoever created God? Religion. Religion brought this issue of God. Religion is the one that tells us in the beginning God created heaven and earth. 
and there are other uh, other 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 concept or other ideas that people believe about creation. It's only people that believe in the Bible or Quran or or or, 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 or Torah. That's people that, that belong to that Abrahamic religions. They are the ones that believe in this God that created this Adam and Eve. But other people don't believe that nonsense. People in India, in Asia, they don't believe that nonsense. Because it's nonsense. Somebody just woke up one day and tell you, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. And you believe that. In the beginning God created you. You believe that. Tell me the date. You say you don't have to know. You are a, God is a spirit. If God is a spirit, it's all knowing. You're supposed to know the day he created you. He's supposed to make that. Know. He said in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3, Call on me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. So if God is not dead, but I know he's dead, that means he does not exist. But you that believe that God is not dead, let God tell you the day he created you. You know the day your, your mother gave birth to you. And had it been they pay a close attention, they would have known the day your father gave impregnated your mother. I know the day I impregnated my wife to have our daughter. I told her. I, I told her. <laughs> you may not believe it, but uh, that I'm just telling you the truth, the whole truth. I told her. And it's become true. Because many times we don't listen to ourselves. We keep giving our power to imaginary beings. You say it's a spirit. I said, stop using that spiritual nonsense. It's still a natural thing. That you don't understand something doesn't make it spiritual thing. You say it's a, there is a higher force. You know, things just happen like that. It's still part of this universe. It's part of us. It's a natural world we are in. We, we have that force, we have the, that power to do greater. That you can't do something does not mean that somebody else cannot do that. Let us acknowledge ourselves. Let us know ourselves and begin to live as a people without depending on this God. Somebody wrote somewhere and gave to us. So this is what I want to share with us. Remember, that same God they say is a law giver. He's a law breaker. And why are you following a lawbreaker? You're supposed to follow yourself. You don't need any law to live. You just need your life to live. And you have that life.